I first became involved when I volunteered at Reproductive Health Services uh, pretty much a year after my first son was born and I was looking for something in the social work area to do since I was in graduate school of social work at WashU. And uh, Reproductive Health Services was on the list of practicums and I thought this would be a good place for me to volunteer while I was deciding when to return to graduate school and um, was went through the training and I really didn't know much at the time I was uh, it was the beginning sort of of the women's movement for me and our bodies ourselves and all of that and it really was a consciousness raising for me to start to volunteer there and to start to meet the women and uh, the people whose lives were affected by unplanned and uh, unintended pregnancies and little did I know I would sort of stay there for 22 years uh, uh, because it was a place where I found both I was giving of myself but in a sense, I learned so much more from the women who uh, came to the clinic, what they were all about and what their stories were. And each one was so different. And spending time with those women was always just uh, a privilege to me to be able to, to uh, for them to share their stories with me and to feel like I could do something to help them, facilitate them through uh, this crisis, which it was for them. I didn't have any intention of going there I, at all. I really liked direct service and that's what I had intended doing. Um, and little did I know that it would lead me to the National Council of Jewish Women um, who are advocates for reproductive rights and whose volunteers were actually working as volunteers at Reproductive Health Services. So the two kind of merged for me and uh, led me to my second career in advocacy, which uh, has been just to the present and hopefully will continue into the future. It, it is frustrating, it is challenging, um, especially because I've always felt that I respect everyone's viewpoint and that I don't have the answer. There's not just one answer and everyone has to make a personal decision, but uh, on how they feel about it, you know, morally, ethically, um, in terms of their religious values. I think it's been very frustrating to me as a Jewish woman not to be able to uh, get our legislators to understand that by imposing one view, one way, one perspective, that it really, um, it really insults my right to have my religious beliefs because my religious beliefs don't tell me that abortion is is wrong and so having to explain to them over and over again that that this doesn't give them the right to impose their religion on me has been very frustrating um, I think harder because um, they understand it, but at the same time, I haven't been able seen been able to make any inroads on in that area. And it's not frustrating in the Jewish community. The Jewish community clearly understands that, and that's why the Jewish community stands behind reproductive rights uh, as a whole. But um, to get legislators to to get that is very difficult. Oh, there always has to be hope. Uh, I think the the hope comes from building a, um, a a committed effort and a coordinated effort of more and more people. I think my hope comes from watching how the women's movement, how the civil rights movement, the women's movement, the labor movement made such a difference in people's lives and that we were able to have an impact on public policy. And my, my hope is that we still can do that, uh, maybe not as easily as we once were able to do, um, but that we still have to try. I, I think I, my hope is always stems from the fact that we, um, we may not solve it all, it may not be perfect, and we may not even get anywhere, but we can't walk away from it.
I mean, we just have to keep trying and we have to hang in there together. I don't think I could do this by myself. I think I would have given up hope long ago, but doing this with uh, NCJW and with all the other fantastic organizations in the community, the pro-choice community, I think it's that camaraderie that gives me hope.